What's happening everybody? Trey here joined as always by my dad Sean and today reactions to the classics. We're going to be reacting to Seal and not only the artist Seal but we're reacting to the album Seal That's right. by Seal and it's the Seal 1991 not his second album that is also called exactly. Seal. Exactly. So. Yeah it gets all just a little bit <laughs> and there's two different versions of this album but I won't even get into that. So uh, yeah that's that's where we're at y'all here and uh, this comes courtesy of a suggestion from our longtime patron and friend of the channel Alan as always, Alan, appreciate you, Thank man. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate the diversity of records that you bring us. And as somebody who uh, uh, only knows, I think, one Seal song, um, I'm looking forward to diving I, into I the I only know a few, work, and you know? I, don't, I only know one on this one. So uh, looking forward to diving into this, y'all. Before we do, though, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that big red subscribe button. And uh, if you'd like to have us react to a song or support us on Patreon, you can check that out down below. And be sure to follow us on Twitch as well. Uh, we do live streams every week and uh alan uh, a lot of the times joins us man it's always a fun time but uh anyways dad i guess we can get into the quick backs of uh of this debut record from seal released in 1991 his following album as you said in 94 was also called seal i don't know why they did it that way it's usually <laughs> hey, called P seal too. peter gabriel's got like three records yeah he does peter like, gabriel yeah if somebody went in for the new album in 94 <laughs> that didn't know where to buy it as a gift and got the 91 one and got it home here you go trey uh it debuted at number one in the uk <laughs> went on to win Best British Album at the 92 Brit Awards. And later on, we'll kind of have a story on how this all came about, kind of why he debuted so high. But uh, Seal has sold over 20 million records worldwide, won three Brit Awards, as well as four Grammys and an MTV mm. Music Award. As a songwriter, he's received two Novella Awards. Coveted Novella Awards, man. That's a... Uh... That's kind of wild. That's, that's a big time thing. And, and the two versions, just basically the differences, minor and major differences in three songs, Wild, Violet, and Killer are mm. the songs. There's only nine songs on here. We're just going with the original, all lyrics and music written by Seal, except where noted. All right, dude. Well, we're going to start at the beginning. Uh, Seems to make sense. Yeah, uh, aptly named title here. Third single, all right. Uh, the song was edited for the UK release, but the US release saw a completely new remix produced for the the single so always, always weird by seal and guy sigsworth who helps mm. him on a few of these so all right well cool stuff man i'm uh, looking forward to diving into this we're gonna have the lyrics pulled up on our respective computers here music's not going to be in the youtube video due to copyright but if you want to check out the full video with music you can uh we'll have a link down below and um yeah we're just we're using the spotify version of uh of this album so i'm not sure how you know uh, stuff's going to be affected man yeah, but well I, we'll figure yeah, it I don't out know yeah we'll figure it out <laughs> all right thanks again alan thanks and, alan uh, the beginning starting us off in the beginning here. Yeah, smart way to start your very first <laughs> album, right? With Seal, man. Um, as somebody who only knows a Kiss from a Rose by yeah. Seal, man, I, I just didn't, I, I have no idea what to expect uh, musically on this record. Uh, definitely getting uh, obvious electronic influences. Yes, and, and he has a huge influence from there that we will get into on the fourth track. Uh, and also with that 808s drum machine, a little uh, kind of early hip hop uh, as well, a little funkiness um, yeah. even a little bit. So, and, and you know, I, I like that he made it his own. I thought the chorus was definitely the highlight of this track. For sure. Music takes you round and round. It's just one of those that gets uh, kind of stuck in your head. Um, I agreed. But, and I think that was the intention. Yeah, and as you were kind of mentioning, Dad, you kind of want to start your, your debut record off with, the, I think, something a little more upbeat, catchy. Agreed. Yeah, uh, for sure. Because for a lot of people, um, you know, this might be the very first first thing they ever hear from you, uh, especially on the debut. Um, some interesting lyrics in here as well. Uh, talking about a girl um, who's just uh, either in pain or causing pain to others yes. type of deal. Uh, she knew she must destroy everything that we prayed for. I thought that was quite the line. Yeah, I did too. Fourth line right out of the box, man. <laughs> uh, so she sent shameful claim in her lies. She wants us to be what's going on in her mind. So that's another kind of intriguing line for me I agree. Uh, as well. She wants us to be what's going on in her mind. Um, and yet she's destroying uh, everything that they prayed for. So kind of an interesting dichotomy. That music trail took you round and Oh, it around, will, around, man. Around. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, they definitely had kind of that dance uh, type it did. of you style. Know, the majority the... <laughs> of the, of the uh, plot to it was definitely in the uh, very first verse. But uh, now, man, we're going to go to the second track. We have Deep, Deep Water. Deep Water, man, cut clocking in at uh, about six minutes. So let's see if we keep, uh, keep the same musical energy going on this one. Seal coming in 
Our second track, Deep Water. What you think of this one, Dad? I liked it. Kind of had a shift halfway through and kind of changed tempo. I think, you know, with every album, there's a certain emphasis on something. Mm -hmm. Right, whether it's instrumentation, whether it's the voice of the artist. On this one, I think Seal has a very pleasant voice, but I think that it's definitely the tight production and arrangement mm -hmm. of this. Everything is done, you know, just in a very uh, every note has a excellent purpose, way. Man. Yeah, and the, the arrangement is so crisp; everything comes in just right. And so I think that's kind of the goal here to put together a very well yeah. produced album. No man, I, I dug uh, definitely dug the sound because it started off really acoustic guitar driven. Yeah, or... and I thought he sounded great. It shows his versatility right away coming from the yeah. pattern, you know, from the beginning into this. And then halfway through, as you mentioned, Dad, you get the drum beat that finally drops some different percussion in there. And then at the end, you also had a it sounded like an organ or you know some type of you know yeah. keyboard up in there. So musically, I thought it was very strong. Uh, I looked it up. Jade is not only you know like. Uh, like a stone or, right. or whatever, but uh, it, the old school definition of it here is a bad tempered or uh, a disreputable woman, which Ooh. knowing that, that kind of lends, uh, lends a little bit more because the whole core is jade, a chain of pain, and then we die. That kind of lends a little it bit does. more. Where, it does. Uh, in, I, I thought lyrically uh, it, was, it was very strong because starting off uh, talking about two people kind of smile on their faces, they enter their doom like they knew if their world should end, they won't care about that anyway. Uh, I jade the water and I burn the fire. Uh, he notes nuclear chemicals making their doom like you knew. If the world should end, you won't care about that anyway. Maybe that's the way you live your life, but I know life it don't always live that way. I like I like the wordplay there. Yeah. No matter how uh, uh, you live your life, life itself is gonna play its way out one way or another. Um, again, very uh, soulful kind of a vocal performance here and uh, strong chorus. And yeah. I, uh, I, I just, uh, I dug this one, man. I, I thought it kind of hit some, hit some high points. And then at the end, it notes, uh, uh, we'll find a way letting the sun go down. Maybe we'll find a way holding the sun. We will find a way uh, letting our life go by. I tell you, we'll find a way. So kind of ends on maybe a more... Uh, more hopeful, yeah, that's yeah. What I was optimistic note. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, it's strong tune here. And now we're gonna go to probably the song that most people know. I don't believe I know it, but, but I. But I'm I, wondering when you hear this if you. I mean, I, I know it's four yeah. years, four years before you were born. But uh, another one he co-wrote with uh, Guy Sigsworth, released as his official debut single. Came one of his biggest hits, probably behind Kiss from a Rose. Yeah. I didn't study it out, but reached two in the UK, his biggest hit there while becoming mm. his first top 10 in the US, number seven. He wrote it in 1990, inspired by the fall of the Berlin Wall and Tiananmen Square Massacre in 1989. Mm. According to the song's producer, Trevor Horn, Crazy was made over the course of two months. He said it wasn't an easy record to make because we were aiming high. Oh, well, there we go. And uh, Seal has a little bit himself yeah. to note about this song. He said, I had no doubt about Crazy. I always thought it had a was a potential number one, even though it never was. <laughs> Almost there, Seal. It was, Almost. It was two. Almost. Close enough. It was the first song I wrote on the guitar and the first song where I said everything I wanted to say in a concise way. Before that, my songs had been too long. But as soon as I wrote the hook, I knew it was a potential hit. We uh, We'll have some wah-wah pedal guitars as well, played by Simply Red uh, guitarist Kenji Suzuki as there well. So um, let's uh, let's get ready. And you know this one, Dad? Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! I, uh, I I'm I'm uh, excited. It's to the only hear song it. on here I knew. <laughs> so taking us to the very end of this yes. track, crazy up in action here. Uh, is this the version you you knew, yeah, or did it? I mean, it's a little. <laughs> I know, I'm looking, there's also a version that's about a minute longer uh, that uh, looks to have a, a bit of an outro here as well. Yeah, um, the one was a little tighter in the U.S., mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, I mean, pretty much the same thing. And, uh, you know, I, again, strong lyrical track, kind of what you were talking about earlier, Dad, with uh, uh, talking about, like, Tiananmen Square in the second yeah. verse and uh, talking about, uh, first off, a man decides after 70 years that what he goes there for is to unlock the door. Uh, Seal himself said that line was about how... Uh, uh, Gorbachev, uh, uh, Gorbachev, rather, uh, went to meet the Pope in 1989, the first time in 70 years that somebody from the Soviet bloc had any kind of dialogue wow. with the Catholic Pope. So, uh, already talking down about uh, breaking down walls, yeah. essentially, and barriers, and I, I think that chorus just kind of hits that. We're never going to survive unless we get a little bit crazy, man. We get a little crazy crossing barriers and uh, building bridges with one another. Yeah, and then he goes in in that second verse and is basically uh, 
talking about Tiananmen Square there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I think songwriting for Seal, you know, he, he wrote, I think, all of these songs. He had some co-writers, but uh, little props there for your uh, debut. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I find that unique that he started this, as we mentioned at the start, with a, just a kind of acoustic guitar yeah. lead going through. Um, yeah, I like that line in the second one. Uh, one of them's got a gun to shoot the other one, and yet together they were friends at school. Um, again, just how, how the world can kind of yeah. bring people against each other. And, uh, um, and then he notes here that in a sky full of people, only some want to fly. Then he expands on that in a world or in heaven, there's only some people that want to fly ain't that crazy um kind of encouraging you to go and uh and seize the day yeah exactly Maybe get a little crazy up in here and uh had you ever heard this i i never did okay no, all right no. i didn't know if you so, know the little hook or anything no i i was kind of surprised i was thinking maybe uh maybe i wouldn't know yeah. it from i even. mean i guess unless you came across yeah. in the movie there's really no way you would have heard it so. but uh but i enjoyed it man i definitely can see how it was a, a big chart success for sure and uh, now we're going to the song killer which uh, we uh, have a the, out of all the songs on this record, this has the most backstory on this. Uh, I'll let you take it away, Dad. All right. It originally, it's a song by British Acid House DJ and record producer Adam Adamski, <laughs> written by Ad Adamski. Adamski. That's how I'll tackle that. And Seal and produced by Adamski. Killer was Adamski. I mean, I had to figure a way to reconcile that because I got to say it 17 times in two sentences. <laughs> Breakthrough single but is now more notable for, for featuring Seal as a vocalist. Mm. It reached number one in the UK for four weeks in 1990. So kind of here, this kind of lets you know how Seal's career came about. Mm. Journalist Dave Simpson conducted a pair of interviews for The Guardian in 2013 with Seal and Ademski concerning the origins of Killer. Ademski recounted that Seal had seen him perform in 1989 in an illegal rave. Uh. Seal had afterwards handed a demo tape to Ademski's MC, Daddy Chester, <laughs> with which both were impressed. Seal had previously been singing in blues bands, which kind of, I guess, shows us how he has that range. But a year mm -hmm. spent traveling in Asia had recently changed his view of life, and he had ah. since become involved in the rave scene. Well, then Ademski and Seal later happened to meet on New Year's Eve 1989 at a club in London, and Seal was invited to work on one of a number of pieces that Ademski was working uh, or performing at that time. Uh, he had an instrumental track he called The Killer because he felt like it sounded like the soundtrack to a movie murder scene. Uh, Seal recorded the vocals in January of 1990. The track featured only two instruments, a keyboard and then a drum machine, which uh, obviously made their uh, influence on Seal to, you know, come up on this uh, uh, record. Yeah, exactly. And the relationship between Ademski and Seal later soured due to their record company wanting to promote the record as solely being by Ademski. Ah. Despite the fact that Seal had both written and sung on the track. Now, if we're saying his name wrong, you're in the UK. Obviously, you know this song. It just is what it is. In the Simpson interviews, both the Dembski and Seal recalled that they were in financial trouble at the time of recording. Seal was almost penniless. Seal told Simpson, quote, Within a week, I went from being a relative nobody, this weird guy at Ray's with silver bits in my hair, to a household name. Oh, there you go. And uh, Seal later explained that the words he provided for Killer were intended as an exhortation to freedom and overcoming. That uh, the lyrics are about transcending whatever holds you back. 2020, The Guardian ranked uh, this track as number 87 on their list of the 100 greatest UK number ones. So uh, that's a big time in his own version of Killer, which he recorded a year after first topping the UK singles chart with uh, Adamski. Uh, it reached number 8 in November 91. Which so, is what we're about to listen to. Seal coming in with his... Uh, it's version a killer on here, man. Uh, again, lot to, lot going on musically here. Yeah, and, uh, you know the um, and and lyrically as well. Kind of what we said at the start, where Seal wanted to to write something where you're uh, kind of empowering people to go and overcome what whatever's in in their path, man. Yeah, I liked it. I didn't, you know, I don't know. I'd have to listen to it a bunch, you know, for it to be this big of a song. Yeah, I, I didn't, you know, but. I, yeah, I, sure I feel you. you. You know, this is, uh, you know, I I definitely prefer Crazy and Deep Water. Uh, uh, me too. This. But it's, it's definitely a song of the time, obviously, mm -hmm. 1990. And the purpose, you know, is in clubs and the reason why it was written. But, you know, yeah. for me, not as strong as the last two tracks. Although those of you that, 
you know, were probably my age at, at that time no. when it came out, the original in 1990, which would have been, you know, around 20. You probably love it. So I get it. But yeah, for me, it's fine. And oh, yeah. And uh, you had like the, the brother and sister kind of theme that he notes at the start. And uh, he, he brings that uh, brings that in. The whole solitary brother. Is there still a part of you that wants to live? Solitary sister. Is there still a part of you that wants to give? Um, he notes... Uh, uh, you know that that love theme as well in yeah. here. Um, the, the, we got that repetition. There is no other love, no other love, no other love like ours. Uh, and then at the uh, then at the end, he kind of notes racism is in, in among future kings can only lead to no good. <laughs> Besides, all our sons and daughters already know how that feels. I thought that was a, a powerful line for uh, for obvious reasons. Yeah, almost thirty years later, still <laughs> holds true. Huh? Future kings, <laughs> no. racism can only lead to no good. Huh? Uh, yeah, definitely, man. So uh, even though this isn't like uh probably gonna end up among like my favorite tracks per se i i think if you're playing this in a club oh yeah man big hit you know very much sticks in your head a big hit sure. um and now we're gonna uh transition to the shortest track on the record here we have whirlpool, whirlpool. so uh let's let's see what seal's got got in store for us here seal stripping it back here with just the uh just the acoustic and the piano and uh as we hit the midway point of the record here on whirlpool what uh what were you feeling on this one dad i thought it was fine i thought it showed off his voice i liked it actually better than the last track um it was just it was good for me mm -hmm. i think uh shout out to and you know you mentioned at the start of this but in case you're not watching the full reaction the arrangement of this album i think a lot of times albums and back then they were thought out more but i mean not as much as they were in the 60s 70s and even a little bit in the 80s but the arrangement of, of going from something more almost club like yeah. to something dialed back to really show seals uh Seals versatility and his uh you know his vocal prowess. No, I, I am enjoying the the track listen because you have the beginning which was more kind of dance or right. Club and then we go to deep water, which uh, you know was a little more especially in the first half of the strong uh, strip back crazy of course a great single hit killer going back to the longer kind of a uh, uh, you know club type of sound and then we hit it bring us down come down yeah, from the yeah, exactly. so I, I i do enjoy uh like you said dad uh, that and uh i i like some of some of the phrases in here i thought were pretty darn clever too uh like a square in a circle i try to find another way to win i try to make better ways to the castle that i made whatever moon lights my way and it's invisible by day i hear temptation say yeah and you know he got really really passionate yeah, on the uh, vo vocal delivery just let go and i will take you there um and uh i i, I thought his voice was very uh very uh you know kind of welcoming and uh uh just kind of lovely whenever he was talking about the the angel um if i took a piece of angel if i fell in love with angel he was uh, going in with that for a little bit um but uh yeah man i i enjoy just yeah. uh enjoy what uh, seal had to say on on this one and uh again showing his versatility and now we're going I, i'm just gonna assume with the uh, the album title here we're probably gonna ramp back up with the kind of electro you know electronic type of uh instrumentation i agree because we got future love paradise it was a lead track on future love ep second single from this album 12 in the uk uh, achieved great success in several countries, including Switzerland, Ireland, and Norway, where it reached the top 10. So, yeah, because it was the lead track on the EP, and, you know, yeah. he was into this the dance scene at the time, the rave scene. Yeah, I'm going to guess this one's banging, and we could be totally wrong. Future Love of Paradise coming in, man. Uh, a big hit for me on uh, on this one, man. It was, and it eventually got there to more up-tempo. Not like mm -hmm. some of the others, but... Uh, Started out slower, yeah, really did like that. Was totally wrong thinking that it yeah. was going to be this huge up tempo dance thing. I mean, it got there a little bit, but yeah, really good. Uh, I, I I enjoyed uh, again the lyricism. I'm, I'm noticing on this record there's a uh, a lot of realism, like knowing what's uh, what's going on in relationships or, so. the, or the world, but also a lot of optimism up on this uh, record as well, which uh, I I appreciate, man. Uh, he again kind of he notes the kings and queens followed by princes and princesses. They were future power people throwing love to the loveless shining a light because they wanted it to be seen uh i like that uh, kind of concept of the people in power um showing showing the love instead of kind of hoarding hoarding everything for wow, themselves that's a concept um, eh? <laughs> i uh, i i quite enjoyed that chorus was very catchy i'm noticing here on on these even on first listen you can kind of pick up uh the song 
pretty quickly because it seems yes. like Seal like t- take a phrase or a word where you can kind of like he repeats it a lot. You can kind of grasp onto well, that. Well, the instrumentation and, is nice during the course to help you kind of rhythm and, it out. Yeah, you know, and the writers will not stop us because the only love they'll find is paradise. Like I can yeah. do it for you now. And, You're right. You know, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and he repeats it twice. The, and the know. the paradise word, you know, that's that's the one that I latched on to just because he says paradise so much. Yes, uh, especially kind of later on in the song, it's kind of a, a almost like a not a call and response, but there's like a background voice right. uh, that's going in with it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I, I I thought that that was a, a good good technique. It's not not easy to make songs catchy. And, and um, have some substance to them. It's yeah. some substance to it for sure. Oh, the songwriting side. Oh, definitely. Um, and so I, I just thought it was a very strong effort by uh, by Seal here, um, and uh, just a pretty pretty powerful uh, powerful tune all the way around, man. So Future Love Paradise definitely gonna uh, be on that short list for for me uh, when we talk of our favorite tracks at the end here. But uh, we still got three tracks left. We have Wild up next, coming in at track number seven, another about one he co- five and a half minutes. So. Yeah, another one he co-wrote with Guy. Guy, Guy appearing uh, left and right on this album yes, he... here. So let's uh, let's see what uh, we got fading us out here with the track Wild. Um, uh, instrumentally here, you had that drum machine, but you also had uh, some strings. So it was you know two two sounds that you don't hear kind of mesh. Uh, normally <laughs> yeah yeah it kind of is what you've come to expect from this album maybe on every other song just uh yeah you know but i still think it's a nice bit of lyricism it starts out with you on a clear day yeah if i tried i don't think i could end it better this way all i have is a photograph and if loneliness can hurt as much as being cold like come way. over here woman and touch me you look so electric <laughs> so all i ask is a second chance mm. so I'm, I'm i'm feeling that uh maybe this relationship went uh went sour and yet he wants that second chance. He wants to go because yeah. why? Because she's got those wild laces with diamonds in your hair. When you smile, you make my world resolve and you take over. Um, I, I think he was able to really uh, kind of pinpoint what uh, what happens when people really are head over heels with somebody. I agree. And even though this um, wasn't my favorite track or anything on this record, uh, still a still a sh- solid showing. Yeah, solid I, solid track. I I, I think all uh, all the way around, he had kind of those female backing vocals on the whole na 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 <laughs> uh, bridge section towards the end uh, uh, end of the uh, the track here, and then he notes uh, at the very end, all my pain obey. Babe, all my love, you know, it's, uh, as you strip off my clothes, acknowledge my pride. You took away all I got, man. He, his heart was broken. Yeah, and, it was. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes we need that uh, pride stripped away so we know what's really important. And uh, for him, it was uh, it was this gal with, with diamonds in her hair, That's man. That's right. Uh, but uh, we only got two, two tracks left, and they're uh, two of the longer songs on the record. We have Show Me coming up next, and... Uh, I'm 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 done uh, I'm done guessing what Seal's gonna have in store for us next musically, man. Uh, I've been I've been wrong left and right here. Show me, show me a nice uh, uh, little slower tempo track than I uh, I expected yeah, here. Yeah, um, me too. I uh, you know I uh, I enjoyed the, instrumentally. We had uh, essentially a, a bass and uh, that again that drum machine kind of going in a little bit. Um, and uh, thematically, there's a lot of tracks on here I've noticed that uh, obviously deal with relationships and love and two people coming together and working their stuff out, but also kind of looking forward to uh, a better future, yeah. I guess you'd say. Uh, we have that here, Welcome to the New World, uh, Let Me Join Your Hand. Uh, we go walking through the old world with a brand new plan all over, you know, Future Love Paradise, of course, you know, kind of touched on the exactly. same type of stuff. What do you think of this one? Yeah, and then he goes in, I think that next line is good too, and God only knows how much I love you. Give me a chance mm-hmm. and I'll show faith all over. You I will understand, lady, if you change your mind, baby. <laughs> only I know what you need. So, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was really pleasant. Different kind of arrangement. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, I keep going back to it. It shows his versatility. He was very smart on this, the way they arranged it, Trevor Horn producing it, uh, that they they didn't stick too much, even though he's highly influenced by the rave culture at yeah. that time and with Killer being on that track the year before, 
of not going too heavy into that dance yeah. thing because he could have got pigeonholed that way. That, so. That's a very, uh, very good point. And, and um, he's so much better than that. Now, there's anything wrong with that, but I mean, like, he, his no, voice he can, can shine, and so they were smart not to go all the way in on that. Yeah, he, he's definitely comfortable in a lot of different yeah. styles, I think, and, the, and I think Show Me is just a, another showcase and Coming from of that, that blues background we talked about at the start, I guess yeah. that's why. Um, yeah, no, Sila, very, uh, very talented guy. Um, he, he notes here as well later on in uh, the track, don't don't, uh, don't mean to take up your time, baby. I won't be stomping on your life. I only wanted to make you see, oh, that you, only you uh, know what I need, man. I need to I need to be using some SEAL lyrics uh, man, with the I'm ladies, you, man. man. Yeah, maybe exactly. that uh, it worked out for him pretty well. <laughs> maybe that would help, uh, help me out, man. But uh, we're already to the last track here. We got the longest song on the record, uh, Violet, coming in. Um, Another one he wrote with Guy. It was the fifth man. and final single. Only went to 34 in the UK, but... Once you get to the fifth single, sometimes it's hard to chart them pretty high. So uh, we got a longer track. I'm expecting. I'm expecting we're gonna. We started newbie with the the beginning, kind of with the electronic rave yeah. influence. I'm gonna say we're gonna end this with eight with and a half minutes. I think yeah. we might go through a, a, a lot of different things, but I think that's where the song will probably settle in at. Violet, bringing us on home for Seal's debut record. Man, uh, what a uh, what a creative track, just all all the way around, man. Um, and I, I've said it in the reaction, but this one was very, very soothing and uh, relaxing. I think uh, the most most soothing uh, one on the entire record, really. And it's interesting ending the record with this, you know. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought it was really well put together. I'll say this is eight and a half minutes long. It should have been about six minutes long. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I think on this one. I think it was really good. I think it drug on too long and. and uh, but I liked it. I mean, what did you think? No, I, I enjoyed this one. I was going to expand man. on that, but I'll do it when we when we do the no, overall yeah. thoughts on the record. Um, yeah, I'm with you. Maybe it could have been trimmed uh, just a little bit. Maybe uh, uh, what, at, at the end, it was interesting because uh, I don't know when Seal himself stopped the lyrics. And then we had a... I, I, I did like that TV or whatever, the movie in the background. Yeah, it causes you to lean in and be like, what's going on? Uh, it it kind of just transports you to... You're just like lazing in a recliner, just like listening to this. And if your own TV was kind of on in the background. Yeah, exactly. Uh, listening to... Uh, listening to the, the atmosphere and music that uh, Seal was setting forth This here. one would have been uh, tough to uh, to produce. Yeah, to I, I, this, one this might be the best produced track on, yeah, the, I uh, agree. on the entire record. Uh, and really, again, kind of a, about a relationship or two people kind of in the midst of a, a, a change in their life. He notes we get uh, the title of the track here. Now that I look at you in different light, a violet unicorn to me, that's all right. I understand you need a change. And when you make that change there, the world will elevate you. Now, if I told you then that I could cry, would you take my tears and watch the sunshine? Man, I, yet again, I got to use that line at the end you there, do. Seal. That's a, <laughs> that's big time, man. Um, it, it almost, rem there's this thing going on uh, on YouTube now where like, They'll play uh, like it's it's like almost like a station that you turn on where it's sounds like it's raining outside and uh, the like doors shut. But there's like old school records going on from the fifties in the background. <gasps> okay, it, it kind of reminded me not that you know this is similar, but just the whole with the TV in the background, yeah, the, the whole production of it. All. it it's a very unique track that uh, I, I think was quite ahead, uh, you know, quite ahead of the game here in 1991. Uh, very, very, sure. very creative on Seal's part there. And now that'll take us to our favorite tracks and overall score of the record. For me, my favorites are going to be Deep Water. I, uh, both lyrically and instrumentally, I thought that was a, a highlight. I really enjoyed Future Love Paradise. Yep. And then uh, probably just for how uh, how catchy and great a song it is, I got to be basic and say crazy um, as well. I'll tell you what, I don't think this has ever happened on a reaction. Oh my. I got the same three favorite songs. <laughs> honorable mention to Show Me, and Honorable mention to Violet, even though, mm -hmm. you know, I said I thought it was too long, I still really enjoyed it. That's going to take us to our overall score, and that's going to be my point on the overall score. You know, when Seal said it in the quote that I read from Crazy, mm -hmm. that he said he had a tendency for his songs to be too long, and then when mm -hmm. he got into Seal and wrote the hook, he knew he could make it concise, it was going to be a number one hit, he thought. I think mm -hmm. that's the only part of this album, mm -hmm. I mean, we got to remember it's his debut album, yeah. where... For me, it could be a little bit different. We could go across the board and shave a minute to a minute and a half mm -hmm. off of six of the nine songs, and I think the album 
would improve. Be a bit more concise. A little more concise. Not a ton off. I understand Mm -hmm. it's part of the vibe of the songs to run on. Uh, and, and it don't ever seem like I was never like, oh man, I wish this song would end. No, it's not like yeah. that, you know, because we've we've reviewed stuff before. <laughs> you're like, geez, man, uh, is this gonna end? Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't like that. But for that, it it knocks down the the score for me just a mm. little bit. A very pleasant listen. Though. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I'd um, agree. Nine tracks, fifty one minutes. Very pleasant listen. I'm gonna be right at a seven point on this. What about Dang, you, Dang, man? You're stealing all my thunder today, Dad, because that's exactly what I was gonna come in. A very solid seven. I mean, seven Evan, I, I promise. Uh, I promise. I'm not just copying. No, a lot of times I've been I've been in the same score as you, and you go first lately. That's know. right. Yeah, you you jump the gun on me. Um, you know, I I, I kind of would agree with you, Dad. Maybe just shave even uh just a, a few you know five minutes off the total runtime right. of the record. But I think Seal coming from that rave culture, what mm-hmm. do you do in the dance? Call? You want those long tracks. Yeah, and for it's ninety one, and yeah. yeah, get the you know really just feel the beats going. Uh, I I did find it interesting though on the second half of the album. We didn't have a lot of a, uh, you, you know, you had your drum machines or maybe yeah, a synth here it, and there. It slowed down. Yeah, we it definitely had, did. we had the beginning kind of crazy killer. Those had their their definite kind of a electronic and rave influences. Sure. But then we had the acoustic whirlpool. Future Love Paradise kicked it up a little, but then our last three tracks really uh, just would take a bit in pieces. And, uh, you, you know, uh, the highlight for me on this uh, is the production, of course. Right. I think it's uh, very crisp. Um, and um, I, I also enjoyed a lot of the lyrical content, I swear though. I was going to say, the lyricism is underrated. That was, yeah. a, that was a pleasant surprise. Not yeah. that I expected there to be trash lyrics, but just knowing, you know, the little I know about Seal, I was thinking, okay, the vibes of these are yeah. going to be the highlight, which in a lot of cases they were, but all also, you get the added bonus of the the cool lyrical content in there as well, man. So yeah, seven for me. I'm uh, glad uh, glad to have listened to this record to um, you know ex- experience some some seal, man. A little go. mix of soul, uh, electronic, early hip hop, all yeah. just kind of blending in into one there. So shout out to Alan yet again for uh, bringing us something new here, yeah, something uh, uh, on the channel that uh, we always like to highlight the a lot of diverse acts. Uh, always that appreciate the research and let us know what you think of this record your favorite track is down in the comment section below and until next time y'all thanks so much for watching happy listening and we will see you